Do you remember anything explained in the history of Japan? If not, watch this video instead. Konnichiwa, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. In this channel, I, Shogo, will introduce various topics about Japan to learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture. This is your One Step Deeper. I believe that many of you have watched the History of Japan before. It is a very entertaining video with accurate content. But I have a question for you. Do you remember anything from it? I think that most people, including myself, will answer no. So today, let's try to understand the outline of Japanese history by looking at the five turning points of samurai history. I used to work at Shishin Samurai Restaurant and Kyoto Samurai Experience that won third place in Japan on TripAdvisor for the lessons and workshops category in 2019. So I've been studying Japanese history for more than 10 years now. By watching this video, you'll be able to understand the outline of Japanese history. This is especially recommended to those who are studying Japanese or willing to come to Japan in the future. So let's go to the Let's start from talking about the origins of the samurais. In ancient Japan, the people lived in peace by migrating, hunting, and gathering. However, after the way of making rice was introduced to Japan, people started to settle down in certain places to make and save food. And depending on the quality of the land you lived in and how much water resources you had, the difference of rich and poor was created. This is how wars started in Japan, with each group trying to take over the other's land and food in order to survive. Because the rich needed a way to protect themselves and their property, they started to hire bodyguards in the Heian era. This is the origins of the samurais. The word samurai literally means people who serve. Next, let's talk about how the shogunate, the samurai government started. The more land you have, the more powerful you are. And whether you were able to protect your important land depended on how strong your samurais were. So the aristocrats gave the samurais more and more power to the point where the samurais became a powerful armed group and started to rule Japan themselves. This is the beginning of the shogunate or bakufu, the samurai government. The first shogunate was called the Kamakura Bakufu, started in 1185 by the top samurai shogun Minamoto no Yoritomo. The Kamakura Bakufu ended due to the disorder after the Mongolian invasion, and the new Muromachi Bakufu followed. And the end of this Muromachi era came war and anarchy. After the eighth shogun, Ashikaga Yoshimasa, decided to have his younger brother become the next shogun because he didn't have a son, his wife gave birth to his son. Uh, my brother already told me I'm the next shogun. No, he is his son. He's rightfully the next shogun. This battle led to a decade-long internal strife that resulted in the Muromachi Bakufu to lose its power. The samurais of each region took advantage of this turmoil and started to rise up to be the next leader of Japan. This is the beginning of the Civil War era that lasted for about 150 years. Each region had their representative samurai, but the strongest of them all was Oda Nobunaga. He succeeded in conquering the capital Kyoto, and his victory was imminent. However, unfortunately, one of his subordinates betrayed him, and he was driven to death only steps away from his goal to be achieved. The time of anarchy finally came to an end by the founder of the Edo Bakufu, Tokugawa Ieyasu. The Edo Bakufu laid out laws to completely rule Japan and keep the people in their place. For example, they clearly divided the people into four social ranks. Samurais, peasants, craftsmen, and merchants. The peasants were right under the samurais to stop them from starting rebellions because they had to do the hard work. The merchants were kept in the lowest rank because they had the money and it was dangerous to give them too much power. 
they kept the samurai families who were originally against the Tokugawa family far away from the capital Tokyo and forced them to visit the government once in a year to make them spend money during the way getting there to keep them poor. Lastly, the Edo Bakfu started the isolation system called Sakoku. This was mainly meant to keep Christianity out of Japan. That was a threat to the absolute power of the shogunate. As a result of all the measures, the Edo era realized a peaceful time of about 250 years, with barely any wars. This long term of peace nurtured the Japanese traditional culture today, and in a way you can say it was thanks to this era that Japanese culture is still so rich. The peaceful Edo era came to an end with the United States coming to Japan. A man named Perry led huge battleships with weaponry to force Japan to abolish the isolation system in 1853. America wanted to use Japan as a place to replenish water and food when they collected whale oil near the oceans of Japan. The oil was used as lubricating oil and fuels for lamps at that time. And they also used Japan as a relay point to trade with China. Some of the samurai groups were dissatisfied with how the Tokugawa shogunate, the Edo Bakfu, was so obedient to this change. They raised take power as the new government, and this led to a nationwide civil war. The new government received backup from England and eventually defeated the Tokugawa shogunate, the Edo Bakfu. This new Meiji government believed that Japan need to become a stronger country in order to negotiate with Western countries on an equal footing. So they abolished the samurai class, took away their katanas, and forced everyone to follow Western culture. This whole change is called the Meiji Restoration, and thus led to the end of the samurais. To achieve more strength, the new government followed colonialism like the Western countries and started to invade neighboring countries. This eventually resulted in conflict, and it led to World War II. So lastly, today's conclusion. To understand the outline of Japanese history, just remember five turning points of samurai culture. 1. The beginning of the samurais. 2. Kamakura Bakufu, the first shogunate. 3. The Civil War Era 4. The Edo Era 5. The Meiji Restoration, the ending of the Samurais In ancient Japan, the landowners needed warriors to protect their land and property, and these warriors were called Samurais. The Samurais started to gain more and more power, and they eventually made their own government called Shogunate, or Bakufu in Japanese. The first Bakufu was called the Kamakura Bakufu, started in 1185 by Minamoto no Yoritomo. The Civil War era started due to the confusion of the Muromachi Bakufu, and with samurais of each region rising up to be the next leader. Oda Nobunaga was the strongest of them all, but he was killed by his traitor subordinate right before his dream came true. The Civil War era ended with Tokugawa Ieyasu, starting the Edo Bakufu. The Tokugawa family laid out measures that realized a peaceful era of about 250 years. However, this peace came to an end with Japan's westernization. A new government defeated the Edo Bakufu and abolished the samurais to follow Western culture. This Meiji restoration was the end of the samurai history. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to understand more about Japanese history, please hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. And my goal is to achieve 10,000 subscribers by July 2021, so your help would mean a lot. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.